everyone. Thank you for watching the Carmel and Butcher Show. My name is Miata Daphne Ifiogene. Today in the studio with us, we've got two powerful young women. These young women are part of a group called Power Women 232, an organization that was started five years ago by enterprising young ladies who decided it was fit to come together and form an organization that will be able to discuss, network. In the studio, we have with us Nikki Spencer Coker and Ajara Boma. Welcome. Thank you, Miata. I've done a bit of an introduction on Power Women, but I think it'll be best if it comes from both of you. As you mentioned, we have been in existence for five years in Sierra Leone. In 2014 or so, we realized um, that we wanted to bring a new face to Sierra Leone women, especially young Sierra Leone women who are professionals and entrepreneurs. We created the network so that we can empower ourselves as individuals first and also to give back to the community. There was a um, conversation um, that we attended that was hosted by the agenda advisor at the time, Natsu Fofana, and we met with um, a woman who came in from Nigeria. She was the head of a bank in Nigeria, and she was just talking about you know how females in Nigeria, they have networks where they support each other, they um, empower each other, as well as give back to the community. And of course, as Sierra Leonean women, we have so many organizations. But what we realized that um, there were many organizations empowering themselves. Okay. So that was one of the key things um, as Power Women. We wanted to make sure. What do you mean by empowering themselves? Empowering um, themselves meaning their members, their individuals. Okay. Most times you see NGOs, organizations that are given to the community, but not feeding yourself. Okay. And it's important if you want to give to others, you have to make sure that you're also equipped and you're also fed. So okay. that was one of the main aims in the beginning I'll of what we started. That. Okay. I'm Nikki. Empowering ourselves now to women in general, what you find happening is that you always have the boys clubs. Mm. You know, the deals and the jobs don't happen when you send in your resume or you send in your application. Yes. It happens when they're hanging out, playing pool, yes. or when they're gambling, or when they're, they're out on the golf course, yes. or they're sitting at the Poyo bar, yes. or they're sitting at, you know, wherever, where they're having a chat, and yes. that's where the deals and things like that are, are place, made. Yes. Women generally don't necessarily, you know, spend a lot of time in those spaces for a variety of reasons. So you may miss out on the conversation. Mm. Uh, so we decided that, you know, really what we should be encouraging in Sierra Leone is this, you know, girls club, this okay. women's club, okay. where basically you're intentional and you're focused about, you know, benefiting the members. Yes. Okay. And we're intentional Fantastic. about it and we're unapologetic about it. And that's what we mean about empowering ourselves okay and so that means sometimes you seem to be a little bit louder than Sierra Leoneans like mm. but I think it's important what is undeniable is that from this point where we um, started as an organization five years ago there's been a plethora of new organizations that were inspired by, by us yeah. we started with a focus for most people that they saw us get involved in the e Ebola epidemic and, and our efforts there. And that was just by the fact that that's, that was the time. Mm. It was 2014 and you know, we're all very strong community-minded women and we were here and we needed to get involved. Okay. And everybody was you know, focused on survivors and they focused on those who were infected and they were focused on people you know, who were desperate. And we saw the need and the sacrifices being made by the health workers, mm. by the nurses, by the doctors you know we lost so many yes, during yes. that time so our focus was putting together these healthcare packages for them and that's what the public saw us doing and we're so encouraged and they loved it and it, as well as if you have if you have integrity and people you know are, are assured that what you're saying is what you're doing the money just kept pouring in we started off just initially it being a one-off Oh but then people kept on sending money, kept on sending money, please, That's you very won't. Good, and yeah. so we continued until we had to stop <laughs> and say, no, don't send us any more money. We're not doing this anymore. We're not about, you know, this is not yeah. what we're doing, you know, so. Okay, great. We've continued from that. Fantastic. So what's the criteria for becoming a member? So <laughs> membership um, nominates individuals that they... So do they all have to be Sierra Leonean? Yes. yes. Okay. 100% Sierra Leonean, because I know a lot of you within the group aren't 100% Sierra Leonean. But they're all 100%. They may be dual citizens. Okay. Yes, but they're all. have <laughs> one that's not a Sierra Leonean. She lived in Sierra Leone and she was part of our community yes. for a long time. She's Nigerian, actually. Okay. Yeah. But mine is everyone else. Is. Yeah. Okay. So does that mean that it's open or is that just the exception? So is it open to non Sierra Leoneans then? Well, the criteria is Sierra Leonean women. Okay. Um, but we are a dynamic and evolving 
um, organization, eventually having chapters in other parts oh, of good. the region. Oh, very good. So our membership will likely not necessarily be fully 100% Sierra Leonean. Okay. But the whole, the intention behind the, the, the starting up of the organization was for Sierra Leone, to change the narrative yeah. of Sierra Leonean yeah. women. And it, and it just, it's us, we're yeah. Sierra Leonean so women. So are you looking at Sierra Leonean women that do not live in Sierra Leone but in other parts of the world in terms of your expansion? Well, we're still trying to decide what yeah. that's going to look like. Okay. So we're five. Yeah. So the foundation has to be set before you open it up. So yeah. those are conversations that we're currently having. Okay. And now it's a membership members. of how many? Currently we have 20 members. That's huge. That's actually small. It's small compared to other female organizations in Sydney. Yeah, and so I think from not where we want to go, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so how is that managed? Because 10 women are in a room, 10 yeah. powerful women in a room, that's a lot. 20 powerful women in a room, that's humongous. Yeah. And there's also the issue or the, the thought that with women, there's always, always a bit of cattiness, pettiness, in-house fighting. Do you guys yeah. experience that? Yeah. Of course. Yeah. I mean, what woman organization doesn't experience yeah. that? Um, I think that's humans. Yeah. I mean, I mean. So how united are you at the moment? If I, I think um, with Power Woman, as women organization, just as you said, we go through our moments. We get in our feelings. and the, We don't speak at times. Exactly. We but disappear. Is, <laughs> we come back when the time is needed. All hands okay. on deck. And we yeah. make sure that we do what we need to do. And I think we have to understand that as well. Just like you said, we're powerful women. And the majority of us are for women. We have our own personalities. We want things done our way. So we do clash. That's it. You know, that's given. But um, we know our vision and our mission. And mm. we want to make sure that we continue to work together. So the membership always makes sure we come back together and focus on what I'm going to come back to that again. But then before I do, um, Nikki, you mentioned something about not being, um, you're not apologetic yeah. for the way you are. You're very inten intentional, etc. But then there are people out there who think that this organization was set up so that um, a bunch of women could glorify themselves and say, oh, we're power women in society, when maybe some of you aren't. Mm -hmm. So what would you say to that, especially yeah. with what you said in terms of not being apologetic? You know, the interesting thing about um, Sierra Leone is that uh, if you're around long enough, you understand that anything that you do, whether it's good, whether it's bad, whether it's mediocre, somebody's going to have something to say about it. Sure. Uh, and when people are not part of something as well, they will definitely have something to say about it. Can you imagine that, you know, we as Sierra Leoneans for the most part are not an aspirational society. We, unlike Nigerians, unlike I, I, even Ghanaians, we somehow, and that's a criticism, I'm saying it's a criticism, yes, mm. but for the most part we seem to not be an aspirational society. So when we see things which are aspirational or people who are intentional about being aspirational, there's always a negative. Time so, you know, oh, they're calling themselves powerful, but they're not really that powerful. Okay, but we say we're going to be powerful. Mm. We're power women, two, three, two. That is the point. Some of us within are very powerful. Some of us are not powerful enough at all. So you're giving Some others the opportunity it within. It is precisely nothing wrong level. with being aspirational. Mm. The women... Uh, within this organization are individuals and a collective. Mm. Individually, every single one is doing something somewhere, s somehow in a separate field and is very, you know, intentional and good at what she is doing. Mm. If, if we've said that the, the aim of the organization t is to empower its membership, why get upset if you see them out doing mm. precisely that? Um, I encourage as many women in Sierra Leone as possible to form these sorts of organizations. It is extremely validating. It is extremely supportive. Yeah. If it, some people, and we have them within the group, are introverts. They do not and they never were a part of any group mm. ever. And then all of a sudden, for some reason, they're, they're part of this one. Yeah. And you still have your space, yeah. but it gives you something. How are you mentoring? So I bumped into a group of young women, young girls the other yeah. day. I was at an event. What they do is they encourage each other. Most of them are in school. I think they have this forum where they all get together and they talk about um, being abused and they have people that talk to them, etc. Yeah. Um, they use different schools. Mm -hmm. I've forgotten what they're called, but they use different schools as uh, meeting points. Mm -hmm. After the meeting, and I asked them, I said, so how are you mentored? So they said what they do is they actually go and meet organizations that can then mentor them. So yeah. are you mentoring young ladies? Yeah. In 2017, um, was our community service at that time was about mentoring. 
So we partnered with an organization in Sierra Leone that had students across um, different schools within Freetown, and members of Power Women became mentors to those individuals. And um, it was called the Aspire Program. Um, wow. So we pi um, partnered with Giselle, Girls in Column in Sierra Leone. And as individuals, some of us are still mentors to those girls okay. that we um, mentored at that time. And even without um, a structured program, a lot of us are mentors to women. And we also get mentored as individuals as well. Because I think, you know, as for me and some of our members, mentorship is very important. You know, Nikki was talking about aspiration. How do you develop into the woman that you want to be? We have, like you said, young women who look up to us and they're looking for um, aspirational women in our society that they can say, okay, I want to aspire to be like this individual or better than this individual. So we do that in, as individuals and as a network. And we continue, even I know there are discussions currently, how can we get more mentors for us as Yeah, I think that's very important as well. as well. Yeah, because, you know, in the society, and I guess because with what we're doing now, we're meeting like a lot of young women, and we find that there is a need yeah. for them to actually be mentored properly. You know, it's mm -hmm. just a case of a one-off. Yeah. So, yes, you did it in 2017. It would be great to see that it's actually something that, you know, you do, yeah. you know, continue. Um, and then that brings me back again to 2019. So this is your fifth year of being in existence but it's really fantastic that you've been able to go so far i think after five if you can do another five mm -hmm. then you're here to stay um so it's your fifth year but you've been really quiet and we're at the end of the year and i haven't heard anything from power women apart from your ball coming up which we'll talk about why are you guys so quiet what's going on so this year we really we t we've been talking about being intentional and we've been talking about taking care of ourselves as individuals so um, over the past couple of years, we have been doing so much for the community. And as you're coming into five, you want to evaluate yourself, where you are, where you want to be. How can we live another five to 10 years? So this year has been focused on the membership. Okay. We've had in-house activities and programming. Uh -huh. However, we have still been doing some of our community engagement um, activities. So we still have the um, conversation series this year. We had um, our hygiene project. And we've also How many conversation series did you have this year? We've had one this year. Yeah, so yes. that's small for yes. what you've had in the past. Yes. And your conversation series basically is where you bring in mentors, mentors that can then talk to a group of people. Community, you yeah. invite people, you know, within the community and within, yeah. okay. So no, just so people understand what that is, okay. Yeah. Yes, as Adra said, we've been intentionally, you know, quiet this past year as we decided that we were going to focus. You see, every single year uh, prior to this, we, we've always had uh, within our strategic plan, self-care, self-care, self-care. We've been doing, you know, all the conversation series, all the hy hygiene packs. The and you're all professionals, and you've got and families. Yes. Yeah. I mean, it's not none of us yeah. has this as a job. None of us yeah. is getting paid uh, for this. So we're all, you know, working women, business women, with families, uh, and so you have to balance all of that. Yeah. What, you know, professional women do yeah. on a regular basis. Yeah. And so when we came to the end of last year, we decided intentionally, okay, everything was going to be stripped down for this year, as we we didn't even take any new members. Uh, you didn't? They, no, intentionally, not this. Intentionally. Those members, those new members I'm seeing are not they you? Were, they were from no. last They were there from last year? Yes. Ah, okay. yes. Intentionally didn't take, because we were decided to do this, you know, put okay. us in and, you know, have a look uh, at where we were and what we wanted to do and in, ensure that the, the vision of what we were saying Power Women was and what we wanted to be was, you know, being built on a solid foundation for the future. And, you know, some people would still believe in it, some people would not believe in it anymore, but we need to ensure that anybody coming in understood what this organization was about. So, and where it based on go. the fact that you're reflecting yes. um, in 2019, have you lost any members in terms of your, whilst you're reflecting? Because you just said something about some that might believe, some might not believe in the agenda anymore, so have you lost any members? Yeah, we, we, we have. We've lost members who could who, you know, stated that they could not continue to make the commitment okay. to the organization and just felt that they, you know, because they were not um, contributing um, you know, to, to it, that they it would be best if we separated. Okay. And one thing, um, all those relationships remain positive. Oh, that's good. It's and a very they, small society yeah, anyway. they all remain positive. They all support, and, and uh, you know, even outside, you know, in, the, in their particular areas. Oh, good. They all come back for the big events and, oh, you know, participate and are welcome with open arms because, you know, we're not about, you know, being enemies with anybody. Mm. Um, you talked about uh, earlier a little bit about, you know, how is it that you manage so many women and, and you know, women's Mr. Caddy and, you know, some of us 
Adra and myself uh, <laughs> are uh, uh, sorority members. Yeah. So this uh, is something which we've dealt with for years. Okay. Okay. So you know, <laughs> we're both in not the same sorority. Same sorority. Different sorority. Okay. Different hers, but <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> from um, from our university days in the United States, but yeah. that understanding of, uh, of those sort of relationships, I think sometimes it, it helps to for you to cushion and not to take certain things so personally. Yes, yes. You may take it, take it personally in the, in the moment, but if in essentially you believe in what the organization is about, you will find the way to, you mm. know, to get around. Yeah. And, so know, are you all your you sister's know. keepers? I, I definitely think, you know, we are. And as an African woman, it's important. Sisterhood is important to me as an individual. So even if we don't get along right now and we have an issue. Yeah. We have to resolve it At some so point. that we can move forward yeah. together because I definitely, Are they definitely. Do all of yes. these issues get resolved? Not always. Not always, but what happens look at when the it doesn't get resolved? You, look you, at the you agree picture. that it's this particular issue, you can't resolve this for whatever reason, mm -hmm. but we can work okay. for the good of the organization. Okay. The organization. Okay. Sometimes you just can't, you, sometimes that's just human nature. Mm. Some things, you you know, as long as we ha we haven't, you know, we're not enemies. Mm. Yeah. We, we don't hate each other, yeah. you know, but okay, the, on this particular thing, I, I'm not, I will mm. never feel you on this, I'm not feeling mm. on this, but hey, whatever, we still got to do yeah. whatever, you know, so that's how we, that's how we move. Yeah. So let's talk about this noise. Can I just oh, sorry. chime into something Nikki said, and okay. I think, you know, it's important when you talk about female organizations and us as African women, I think we grow, mm. we evolve, mm. and sometimes, you know, um, like we were talking about rules and members, some members taking um, step um, seat, back seats and stepping back. It's part of who we are as women, and we have to make sure that we own into that, because if we're not owning into who we are, then we're going to lose ourselves. Yeah. And we've had, you know, personal things happen. And as women, we're always, as Nikki mentioned, we're always the ones that should be holding down the fort. Yeah. But, and we're always supposed to wear the S on our chest and be the superwoman. But mm -hmm. what happens when you're tired of smiling on the outside and yeah. you're, you know, hurting a lot inside? Mm -hmm. You have to really look into that. And I think sometimes as organizations and as women, we forget that um, part, that human part, mm -hmm. that is so real in anything that we do where it can affect our jobs, it can yeah. affect our personal lives. So I think as an organization, as you said, five years is not, you know, mm. yesterday. Yeah. So we've gone through a lot of things together as individuals with our members, and we're still pushing through. Do you do a lot of activities outside the organization? So, for instance, yes. someone throwing a party and inviting others? Yeah, mm -hmm. we do. We do, do you invite that. everyone or just select few that it you depends. think you have a relationship um, yeah. with? Some people have invited all members, some mm -hmm. people have not. <laughs> it invited. depends on okay. some, yeah. some members. Yeah. Um, you know, we've had you know family events, oh, you know, the, mm -hmm. the baby showers, or the weddings, yeah. or the oh, birthdays, and women they have businesses, they have careers, they mm. have you know, all sorts of things which they're doing outside of what we do try to do, and that's important, is to support each other's businesses and ventures. Okay. So, for example, and and, and careers. So, if as a lawyer, if I uh, somebody within the network sees an opportunity in which somebody would need some sort of legal something, I, I my expectation of the network is that I would be one of the first people uh -huh. to look to okay. and call. Let's talk about noise, which you mentioned earlier. So, yes, it it has been intentional for you guys to be or for your group to be quiet in 2019 because you're doing a lot of self-assessment and you're doing a lot of reflections. However, um, you have a ball coming up on the 23rd of November. And um, are we expecting to see a lot of noise after the ball? So the network ball, um, which whose theme this year is um, how to transform your network, your network into your network. But has that been a recurring theme? It has not necessarily it's the theme of the ball. of the of the organization okay. i mean you know and that's the reason why the the name the net worth ball was um picked initially your network is your net worth that's been the overriding theme and so now we're bringing somebody who's coming in and all of the speakers in the past balls sort of spoke on that how it is that you transform this networking thing oh, into something and builds you up career wise professionally business wise how is it that you can you know tap into these various networks how 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 are the people that you associate with um responsible for your advancement you know somehow in life whatever it is you choose it to be so 
but this specifically our speaker coming in this year is focused on that thing, um, how to transform your, your network. Where's your speaker coming from? From She's Nigeria. Coming from Nigeria. Mm -hmm. So you've had one from Ghana, Nigeria. Have you had a Sierra Leonean? Yes. Sort of, kind of, yes, yes. Yeah, yes. again, last year. Sierra Leone. Yeah. Last year. Okay. In fact, two, both were, uh, were resident in Sierra Leone. The first one, um, okay. who was. So you haven't had a 100% Sierra Leonean. So why nice haven't balance. you had a Sierra Leonean on your. Because, at your ball? well, I mean, it's not like we decided not to have a Sierra Leonean as, as the guest speaker at the ball. Um, it's that um, we're, because of the type of organization that we are, we're always looking to be aspirational. Okay. So it's not just focused on the internal. Mm. Have you thought of tapping into the Nigerian community? Because they're pretty big here. Eh, well, you know. You know so, so I think, yeah. yes. Um, In roads. <laughs> we've had, of course, yeah. Nigerians who attend our events always. and as mm -hmm. speakers as well. One of the things we realize as Sierra Leoneans, sometimes we don't even understand how to network. And when we say transforming your network into your net worth, it's not just about meeting people, getting business cards, and going home. How do you cultivate relationships that may develop to something bigger in the future or now? And I think sometimes we miss out on that opportunity. So the ball is definitely a networking opportunity where we bring in the right people from the community. So when people, you know, people complain, oh, it's so expensive, oh, it's um, an elite crowd or whatever mm -hmm. the case may be, we hear all these things. Like Nikki said, you know, our guest speakers, how can we bridge community in Nigeria and mm -hmm. Ghana and Gambia and other countries? So that's why one of the reasons we're very intentional about who we have as our keynote speakers and who we bring into the space for the ball. Because um, Sierra Leone, we can all say we all know ourselves, mm -hmm. but can we step out of Sierra Leone? How can we integrate into other African communities, into other African countries? And that's something that we really want to see. Um, more Sierra Leonean businesses in um, Nigeria, in Ghana, exactly. just like their businesses yeah. are here in yeah. Sierra Leone. How can we begin to take advantage of the op other opportunities within the region and in Africa in general? Great. As an organization, partnerships, strategic alliances, I'm big on that. So yeah. you guys looking mm -hmm. at that? Definitely. Globally. Um, in fact, it, we've always had partnerships mm -hmm. since the inception, um, in, whether small, whether large, but in everything that we're doing, um, we've partnered with somebody somehow okay. to, you know, to make it uh, possible. And you're talking about noise and what's happening now after, after the ball. Um, uh, of course, the ball is our big fundraiser uh, for the year. It, it basically powers everything that we do community-wise. Uh -huh. For the entire year, yeah, okay. as we come out of, I guess you, you know, this hibernating phase mm -hmm. into um, uh, 2020, and the idea is that we, we'll be doing our strategic planning um, at, the, at the end of this year okay. and setting our our, goals. Our, our goals. goals and aspirations for 2020. Definitely, our conversations with series will make a comeback. And that automatically and means that you are going to be the president. Yes. running that ship yes. next year. Yes, okay. um, we, uh, our organization um, uh, uh, has a president-elect in the election, so we always know after Ooh, the, the president who's president the next president, president, president will be you know, uh, taking over the, the steering of the ship for the year period, yeah. because we, it's a year. I, I, I kind of dispute, as Adra said, you know, that we've necessarily been quiet. If you've been following <laughs> on the social media, uh, you've definitely seen um, that you know, these people are doing this, that, and the other. And we've been focused a lot on, on celebrating and um, uh, supporting our membership. We've okay. got some very dynamic people mm -hmm. that are worth celebrating. I mean, I, I, we just can't, today's her birthday, by the way. Um, Asma James, who is the BBC 100 yeah. woman. And, and so, I mean, there's- A lot of you had had appointments. Yeah. You're celebrating yourselves. Yes. So 2020, um, you know, our, one of our flagship projects, projects uh, with Power Women is, of course, our conversations with series, and we would hope to do, normally, uh, in previous years, we'd, we'd have done four to six of those um, a year, and so we'd come back to that to number. That, okay. um, for, because it, that is an, an opportunity for the community to really meet and have these interesting conversations yeah. with We missed Union. those this year, yeah, and, and just hearing their stories yeah. and, you know, surprising things. Yeah. and. We enjoy them as much as I think the audience uh, does because you learn yeah. so much. And so we miss them as well. I so. think it's also yeah. good knowing that, you know, what people miss. Yeah. Sometimes you have to take that back seat yeah. just to yeah. 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 And see, okay, yeah. are we doing the right things? Is yeah. this what people are looking yeah. for? So which yeah. is what and you've done in this to, year. Yeah, yeah. So seeing as you've evaluated, you've assessed yourselves, you've um, examined yourselves internally, the organization, mm -hmm. individuals, where are you going to be? for 2020. So I know you're doing something at the end of the year where you guys actually 
set your goals, etc. But then during that evaluation, you certainly would know where you guys want to be in 2020. Yeah, yeah so we have our AGM um, in December, okay. where we know the current executives gives a hand and over to the new executive, talk about what we've done, some recommendations moving forward. And from the AGM, we have, of course, our strategic planning meeting where we plan what we want to do for the um, next coming year. So it is a time, you know, as we're getting the feedback, where are some areas that we really need to focus on moving forward. So yeah. our um, projects for the year, our activities will be out in January. At least that's the kickstart of our new year. So okay. stay tuned and look forward to what's oh, happening. Oh, definitely, again. definitely we will be. Usually when a lot of people or um, viewers watch, there are a lot of um, individuals, especially young ladies who are sat in various parts of the world who, yes, some of them want to come home or some of them have heard of Sierra Leone and would like to know a lot that's going on here. So these kind of conversations then sends out that message. But then again, it'll also be very good for you to be able to have a, you know, just like a quick one-on-one, -on -one. let whoever it is that's watching actually, you know, give them some form of inspiration. So yes, they've heard you, but then, you know, it's always good when they also feel that, okay, they're hearing a direct message on how they need to be you know to aspire and to become the kind of women that they see on 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 our show thanks Carmel and Butcher for having us you know as power women we are very aspirational and one of the things that we really want to make sure is that you know young women live your life live your dream don't let anything hold you back from being who you want to be and as Nikki said you don't you don't have to apologize about it if there's something you want to do do it people will talk whether or not you do good or you do bad just you know shoot past the sky and you know try to hold fast to your dream you never understand that your mistakes sometimes are not mistakes at all don't be afraid to fail coming to Sierra Leone if you're living here you're growing up as a woman, as you're growing up as a girl here, and sometimes it's very, very difficult. Do not be afraid to fail, and to get up, and to try again. Understand that where you are, perhaps in the one year, two years, is not necessarily where you're going to be in three, four, or five years. Don't let the past hold you back from the future. I promise you, it gets better. It <laughs> does. Salon Aforo and Grap. Remember that. <laughs> stronger <laughs> oh thank you so much ladies i mean this has been so good we've had on the show today two i did say powerful women didn't i in the beginning and yes they are to follow you'll see the handles at the bottom of the screen to follow all what they're doing yes the ball is coming up 23rd of november it's going to be very glamorous but then you remember everyone is there to also network and develop your net worth it's been a pleasure having them on the show. We hope you've been inspired. Don't forget to watch, like, and subscribe to the Common and Butcher YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.